Khrushchev was a well-known communist leader during the Cold War. Now, during one of his formal addresses to the party faithful, he proceeded to denounce his predecessor, Stalin, for crimes committed against his own people. Halfway through the address, a voice from nowhere piped up from the audience. Where were you, Mr. Khrushchev, when all these atrocities were taking place? There was a stony silence, Khrushchev then said. Would the man who said that please identify himself? No one moved. You could hear a pin drop. Khrushchev continued, Now you know, comrade, where I was when all these atrocities were taking place. Unlike the man in the audience, as Catholic Christians, we must not hide our identity when our faith is challenged, or worse, disowned by non-believers. Jesus said in today's Gospel, when your faith is tested, that will be your opportunity to bear witness. In our bid these days to be more ecumenically sensitive, there is a tendency to skim over the self-sacrifice of those who gave their lives to the Catholic faith in this country and explain it away as a product of a less enlightened, more barbaric age. Last Sunday we remember those who gave their lives in war, but as Catholics, neither should we forget those who freely sacrificed their lives in defence of the faith in this country, like Margaret Clitheroe, for instance, a convert to Catholicism, mother of three, who was sweet talk to renounce her faith, but she stood firm to the end. But it's not just confined to the Middle Ages. A few years ago, Pope Benedict canonised over 400 people who died for the faith during the Spanish Civil War of the 1930s. And last year, there were at least 300 people in different parts of the world who paid the ultimate price for their Christian beliefs. Not far from here in Sheffield, there is the shrine to the Padley Martyrs, Fathers Nicholas Garlick and Robert Ludlam, whom we mention in the vocations prayer. They gave their lives simply because they remained faithful to the Catholic priesthood and the Mass during the turbulent Elizabethan era. They were betrayed by a family member, and now this re-echoes the words of Jesus. You will be betrayed even by relations and friends. The dissolution of roughly 900 monasteries after 1536 meant that huge swathes of monastic land became available and there was more than a few customers. This land was the most developed and best farmed in the country. The distribution of confiscated monast monastic land gave an added boost to the new religion, as it was called then. The promise of land was given to those who exchanged information on the whereabouts of Catholic priests and courageous lay people who lent their homes for the celebration of the Holy Mass. People even grasped on their own kith and kin. Let's not forget, of course, that Jesus himself was betrayed by one of his own inner circle for 30 pieces of silver. Now, of all the saints in the church's calendar, after Our Lady, of course, the martyrs hold pride of place. We're not, we are not likely to be asked to shed our blood, but opportunities will come our way in our everyday lives to stand up for Christ and his teaching. The Lord's words are clear. Anyone who declares himself for me in the presence of men, I will declare myself for him the presence of my Father in heaven. Now thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh.